Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli, and um, I want to do. A, I, I do sometimes like the first five things that you need, or like the five most important things that you need. These are going to be the five most important chokes. I feel like now. Having said that, um, these are not just like the the only only five chokes. I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit, and I'm going to include kind of subcategories. You'll see what I mean as we go. Um, obviously, this is not a like complete list of like all the chokes of jujitsu. These are just some of the most important ones. I feel like are really versatile and they help to set other things up and there's a lot of ways to get to them and so they're really good tools to have in your toolbox so anyway um, this is how we go not in order of importance at all but this is the list um, so to start with and I'm not gonna really talk about the position how to end up here or whatever but uh, is the rear naked choke so on the rear naked choke here the application of it is like this I want to match up roughly speaking the V shape of my arm here with the V shape of his neck like this. So whenever we get to this position now, I don't want to go here like on the bicep like a sleeper hold like in WWE style. I want to go as high up as I possibly can here. And then this one, I don't want to leave this in front of him for him to grab like this instead. And I don't want to necessarily comb his hair back. I want to hide this one, the back of my hand behind the back of his neck here like this. I want to keep my chin down on top of my hand so it makes it difficult for him to peel the hands away this direction and I squeeze and that's it. Now um, we can talk about like expanding the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together, reaching like shrugging the shoulders, all that stuff. The main thing is close the opening uh, here around his neck however you have to accomplish that. Now um, I will show kind of a variation of a grip because sometimes this is hard to get here behind his neck. Maybe he's too flush against me. So instead I'll go for it. I'll look for a short choke. A short choke is a gable grip essentially where I put my forearm here behind his shoulder blade and I get like this direction. Again, I'm going to try to put my head here on top of it. I also use my head to kind of push him into the squeeze of the choke and it makes it a nice tight choke and I don't have to worry about getting this one all the way behind him. So that's the rear naked choke. Typically what happens for me having my hooks in, something like this, maybe overhook, underhook side we can fall to, but that's where it's gonna come from. Uh, next on the list is gonna be the guillotine choke. The guillotine choke is, uh, I think, probably one of the most versatile chokes, uh, simply because you can do it standing, you can do it on the ground, you can do it from top, you can do it from guard, you can do it from side control. Um, but I wanna go over kind of the basic application of it, and it looks something like this. So the basic kind of application of the guillotine choke is I'm gonna take my forearm here, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna get kind of perpendicular to his neck. I want the, the pec here, where it inserts from the shoulder to the pec here like that on the back of his neck. I'm not gonna arch here like this, but instead I'm gonna keep hunched forward, I'm gonna bring my hips in, and the grip here where I'm making the connection is I'm grabbing here toward the base of the wrist like this, um, all the way toward the blade of the hand. Whenever I do that, I don't want him to have his shoulder on top of my forearm and kind of smother the choke. I want to get this nice high elbow guillotine, and then that's going to make it difficult for him to be able to throw his arm over to defend like this. It actually is going to tighten the choke up sometimes if he tries to do that. So then from here, I go and I squeeze. Everything comes forward. Now, again, we can do that from standing. We can do that on the ground, top, bottom, anything. I'll show you kind of how it looks from the guard because there's also a consideration for if he gets the arm inside. Say that he was doing this and I, yeah, he tackled me to the floor and I was able to go here and pull into the guard. But the problem is here now, he's got his shoulder and arm inside. So even if I make the connection here, if I pull, a lot of that pressure is going into his armpit instead of into the neck and where it should be going. So instead, I wanna get up onto my side more and now this is gonna flex a little bit better here like this. I'm gonna keep the same kind of connection, but I'm gonna squeeze the elbows together and kind of scoop and curl like I'm kind of spooning something toward my mouth this way and the legs are actually gonna pull him in tighter to the choke so it compacts and squeezes like that. And that's what's gonna happen whenever I have the arm on the inside, which again, I would like to have it on the outside high elbow guillotine is a lot tighter. Um, but guillotine choke, a uh, really great choke to do from standing, ground, top side control, mount. I'll maybe do like a whole other uh, video on just guillotine chokes sometimes. So the next one that I want to mention is, um, it's kind of hard to kind of figure out which order I want to show these in. Again, these are not in order of importance or anything like that, but I do want to mention that uh, the arm triangle. The arm triangle is another really versatile choke that you can hit from a lot of different directions. And the way that I'm going to apply it right now is uh, from the mount position. From here, I want to get underneath his head. I want to walk this arm up here and get some kind of connection this way. I would like to get my head to the outside of his arm. This might happen a lot of different ways. Maybe he was framing on me and I shoved his arm across. Maybe I walked it up and got into this position, but I want to show mainly the application rather than the entry points. So once I get this across here, I'm going to gable grip my two hands. I want to get my forehead all the way down to the connection of my hands to staple it together. And then I want to dismount. I can finish this maybe from mount, but it's a lot harder. It's easier to finish this from uh, dismounted off to side control. When I go to dismount here, I step off. I can stay up on my knees or I can mount my hips down to the floor here like this, squeeze and drop. As a variation here, instead of dropping down to my hips, I can 
swing out this way and go into like a more of a rear naked choke style like that and finish that way as well. Um, I can also stay on my knees and sink out this direction here to finish the arm triangle too. So you can finish the arm triangle, standard application from side control, same side like that. You can finish knee on belly, sometimes even from half guard. There's a lot of variations of the arm triangle, which is why I made a whole separate video on it called arm triangles from everywhere. So check that one out too, and you'll see like a, what I mean by that. Um, but just to kind of keep uh, this in mind as well, if Mitch is here, arm triangle can also mean uh, anaconda choke. Right? I have a whole video on this where I enter in by the neck and out here. So it's not front facing any longer. Now the anaconda choke actually comes from this direction here. And this is the finish on the anaconda choke like this. So it's kind of an inverted entry point to the arm triangle and it ends in the anaconda. Similar to that is if he's on his side and I enter in for what we call the darse choke. The darse choke is where I enter in by the armpit, out by the back of the neck here like this. And then I get control here. I squeeze, drive my hips in. And it's another arm triangle, but this time top side perpendicular, similar to the anaconda, just reverse entry and exit points. So those are still both variations of the arm triangle. There's other variations too, like uh, you could argue that maybe the Japanese necktie is a variation of an arm triangle. Um, any head and arm choke could be a variation of an arm triangle. So we mentioned um, the arm triangle. The arm triangle is, of course, a variation of the triangle choke using the arms rather than the legs. So we couldn't really complete this list without talking about the actual triangle itself, which is one of the hallmark, one of the most powerful chokes in jiu-jitsu. And so what I'm gonna look for here is um, lots of different ways we can set this up, but let's talk about the application of the triangle choke itself. It happens whenever I have Mitch's uh, neck and arm on the inside of my legs here like this, one arm in, one arm out, which is why this is not a good position for him to play for very long whenever we're rolling. And so I wanna get uh, fairly perpendicular to him like this. I don't wanna bite here on his back and squeeze his shoulder blade because he still has a good blood flow on this side and it's not constricting well enough to make him fall asleep. So what I wanna to look to do is try to get this as constricted and compact as possible. And I would like to end this with my knee here in front of his shoulder on this side and both my knees pointing the same direction there. And then I make the connection on that side, nice and tight. And he's already tapping before I can even like get it squeeze all the way because it's that, that tight. So um, one more time here, however it is that I go to set it up, a setup that is very basic that I like a whole lot that still works across the board at different levels is that I punch one, pull one on his wrists, jump and get this kind of lasso position here like this. Then look to rotate. As I go to rotate, I can hold his head in position here like this. As I look to rotate, use the legs to actually do it here, get in front of his shoulder and then close up that triangle here like this. You can use the head pull or pull around your leg like that to get more pressure added to the triangle choke. Uh, triangle choke is not done just from guard. Uh, it can be set up from guard, but it can also be set up from uh, mount or side mount. It can have a lot of different entry points. You, there's things like flying triangles that you see in competition sometimes. So again, very powerful move. I'm using some of the most powerful parts of my body versus his neck. So it's a, not really a fair fight for him. Now backtracking just a little bit, uh, another choke that I like that I found a lot of use for um, in maybe not even just for a finish, but it, it can definitely get a finish. Um, but it also is good for setting up things like uh, Americanas for different kind of arm locks for different kinds of triangles and arm triangles is the punch choke. So it's almost like an accessory choke to other chokes for setups, but like I said before, it can definitely get the finish. Essentially what I'm looking for is similar to a no-gi Ezekiel choke. An Ezekiel choke with the gi is where I reach inside my sleeve as it were, and then I bring this one around and then I, I pull through like that. So that would be an Ezekiel choke. So it's similar here. Of course, I can't really grab material whenever it's no-gi. Um, and I don't necessarily want to go here like this because sometimes that's hard to get, although you can get it like that. Um, so what I want to do instead is I want to reach deep underneath here like this and I want to try to get this kind of like ninja fist here like that, this little paw instead of like a full fist. Um, although you can use your knuckles, but I like to use this little paw here and then grab this hand on top of my own forearm and then my shoulder on one side, that paw on the other side and I squeeze here and he is really a miserable choke. If that does not get the tap, it's at least going to elicit a response from him and often the response is him raising his arms up, opening his armpits, allowing me to get a higher mount, and then uh, moving into another, like a secondary um, position, a better position, or another submission. Somewhere between the punch choke and the arm triangle is uh, something here where we're getting to this position, and I'm looking to try to get here, but I can also come here like this, and I can come around where I'm grabbing underneath like this on my forearm, and then putting this one in behind his head here like this, and squeeze for that kind of punch choke that way, right? Um, this is uh, also similar to what we've been referring to lately in the community as the Epstein choke. The Epstein choke is, um, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> this is this is a this is similar to what we've been referring to in the community as the Epstein choke. Um, watch uh, Jamie Kilstein's video on the Epstein choke. It's an epic video. Um, but whenever I get to this position and I have this kind of seatbelt position here, trying to finish the choke, can't finish it with one hand. I'm going to use this hand here like this and come in for like this kind of a no gi Ezekiel type of choke here, like this, somewhere between a punch choke and an arm triangle, and then here and we get that. You can also use it with just a karate chop like that too. Um, both of them work pretty well. It depends on the size of your fist, the size of his neck, and a lot of other considerations. Okay, so this video started out to be like some of the like five most, uh, because that's a nice round number of five most important chokes that I think you need to know from Jiu Jitsu. It turned into like 80 chokes or something. I don't know how many we've got by this point, but uh, I hope that you like these anyway, um, regardless of how many there are, and you see some versatility and some usefulness out of these. And um, if you've got something to add to the list that I left out that are like egregious errors, then let me know in the comments section. If you liked what I showed, then let me know that too, please. And uh, keep watching the Night Jiu Jitsu channel, guys. Thank you.